today's cloud study, I have my watercolor journal again and I've taped around the edges. To help prevent the tape from sticking too hard to the paper and ripping it up when you remove the tape, it's a good idea to fuzz it up a little bit by first maybe patting it on your sleeve just to remove some of the stickiness. So that's what I did here. My colors today are Thalo Blue, Ultramarine Blue, Alizarin Crimson, Burnt Sienna, and I have both Lemon Yellow and Hansa Yellow Light. Both of them are pretty similar. I just happen to have both of them on my palette from a previous painting. So I'm gonna be using those colors. I'm not gonna use are the Indigo and the Holbein Yellow Ochre. And the reason for that is that they're both semi-opaque colors or semi-transparent colors. So they aren't going to have the same beautiful transparent look as some of these other colors within the clouds. So I'm gonna to stick to my transparent colors for the clouds. I have in the past used indigo and I just did not like how it looked, so we'll leave that one out today. All right, start by doing a quick sketch of the outer dimension of the cloud. And it's a little different from some of our previous cloud studies because there's gonna be a decisive hard edge where the brightly lit cloud is up against the blue background of the sky. So we do want to draw our cloud on as accurately as possible, but sketch lightly. You don't want all of your pencil marks to show up underneath the paint necessarily. And it doesn't have to be a perfect sketch. That's the wonderful thing about sketching clouds. They can be as irregular as you want because of course that's what clouds do. They move constantly and shift and shape shift so it's not going to be a big deal if your clouds are a little different from the reference photo. But I do really like the shape of this one and I love the colors. So that's what attracted me to this reference image from Unsplash. So there's the general shape. It's really light. I apologize if it's hard to see. And then I'm going to sketch right over here where this other darker cloud shape overlaps the lighter one. You just need to give yourself a little bit of guidance for when you add the paint, just to know generally where you're going to be placing your lights and your darks and your different colors. All right, so that's pretty much it for the sketch. My brushes today are my Kalinsky Sable size six and size eight round brushes. The nice thing about Kalinsky Sable is that it's a natural hair and it holds a lot of paint and a lot of water, which is great for wet and wet techniques. So to start out, we're actually going to begin with the nice yellow tone within the clouds. I want to start with the lightest colors first. I could start with the background, but the danger of that might be that when I apply the yellow here, it could touch the blue and then some bleeding could happen between those two colors. So I'm going to begin with the yellowish golden tone within the lightest part of the cloud. And it's a little bit orangey, isn't it? So we, we just have a primary yellow here. Or, a really cool yellow almost. So we need to warm it up with either your alizarin crimson or your burnt sienna. I'm gonna start with the alizarin crimson and see how that looks first. Mix in a little bit more of the yellow. So we have this really light kind of peach tone. Make sure that it's diluted with plenty of water so that it's not too dark. And then let's just be brave here and go right in. So I'm just lightly painting the cloud anywhere you see that really light orangey tone. You can even grab a little more pure yellow. Painting right up to the edge where the sky meets the cloud. And so just extending that a little bit even into the darker area of the cloud. Remember, it's always easier to go darker. So applying light paint in the areas that are going to be darker is totally fine. There can be some overlap there. The only possible problem you might have is if you don't want that orange color to be inside of this area of the cloud. But I see it extending all throughout here. There's almost this reddish glow through the center of the cloud. So this first wash of yellow and orange will not affect negatively any other washes over the top that are darker. All things to consider when you're working with transparent paint. Okay, so there's our first layer with that golden tone. I'm gonna rinse that out. 
And if you want to get some color down in the dark side of the cloud too, initially, you can certainly do that. Let's mix up a little bit of ultramarine blue. And we'll just start with a light layer of that, just pure blue. We're painting on dry paper right now. which means that it will naturally form hard edges. So you have to be a little bit wary of that. Just push and pull the paint so that it doesn't form any strange edges where you don't want them to be. And your orange should still be a little bit wet. You can overlap some of the blue into that. Just be careful that you don't get too much green looking effects. So as I approach the orange, I'm watering down my paint a little bit and just being slightly more cautious with where I overlap. This is really just serving to get some color down and to start to indicate where the darkest areas in the painting are going to be. And of course it's this shadow side of the cloud that's going to be the darkest. So everything else that we do within this cloud I think is going to be wet and wet. We'll need to let this dry before we do that. Now we're going to mix up our sky blue and for this we're going to use a little bit of wet and wet and also some wet and dry as we carefully navigate the edge of this cloud. Now to do this I am actually going to flip my canvas upside down. So I'm going to have to untape it here and turn it. Alright now the reason I'm going to be painting this upside down is because I want to encourage the paint to flow downward and away from that edge. We want this edge right here next to the cloud to be perfectly hard. And if we're painting in the opposite direction, right side up, the paint will flow into the cloud. We don't want that. We want to avoid that. So let's go ahead and actually mix up our blue first. We're going to do a combination of the phthalo blue and the ultramarine. The reason I'm combining them is because I think the ultramarine is a little bit too warm and the phthalo blue is a little too cool. So combining the two should get us a nice medium, a really nice primary blue. All right, so let's set that down for just a second. Grab your second brush if you have one. I have a slightly larger Kalinsky Sable Round brush. This is a size eight. And I'm gonna take that and dip it in the clean water. And then just paint the sky with our clean water. Be careful around the edges of the cloud. You can paint as close to it as you want but you don't need to touch it. We're gonna do that when we have our solid blue color on our brush and can see a little bit better. All right, so make sure there's no pools or puddles, but that it's nice and damp and ready to take some paint. Then reach for your pre-mixed blue. Mix up some more if you don't feel like it's gonna be quite enough to cover the whole sky. And then go ahead and begin carefully painting around that cloudy edge. Now you can see the benefit of pre-wetting the paper. Already the paint is spreading out softly. It's not forming any hard edges because we prevented that by making the paper wet. Wherever your water goes, your paint will flow. And then quickly pull any edges away. Grab more paint as needed. You can make the edge of your cloud a little bit bumpy. And working upside down can be a little confusing. Just do your best here. But again, remember that the edge of the cloud is going to be a hard edge and it can be bumpy. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be just like your reference photo. Now this is going to be an interesting area over here in the shadow side of the cloud. I think what I'm going to do is actually overlap my blue sky color into the cloud itself a little bit just to encourage a lost edge there. So I'm going to flip my painting back around, dip my brush slightly in the water, and then pull some of that blue into the cloud itself. We are in effect adding a second layer to the shadow side of the cloud with this phthalo ultramarine combination. 
and it's darkening it all up and helping it sort of blend into the sky a little bit. Now remove some of that, or all of it actually, and then soften along that edge. There. Okay, so there's our quickly painted on start. We'll move everything back into place. And so you can see we have this beautiful crisp edge where the cloud is up against the background, of, against the sky. And our sky is really nicely spread out. The color doesn't have any kind of weird hard edges that have formed. There might be a little bit of a strange edge right here where we painted wet on dry next to the wet on wet. But honestly, it doesn't bother me, so I'm just going to leave it alone. If you try to mess with it right now, that's going to accidentally lift paint, and you don't want to do that. So leave that alone and let it dry completely. All right, so this is drying. It's a good idea to check the dryness of your paper before moving elsewhere, but I think we're going to take on some of these beautiful shapes in the cloud right here. And as I mentioned before, this is going to be wet and wet. So I'm taking my water, which isn't so clean anymore. I'm going to switch that out for a different one. Take my clean water and paint inside of the cloud. If your water is a little bit tinted, you will end up seeing that edge when it dries. So try to make your water nice and clean when you're working this way. And we'll stop right about there for now. That should give us plenty of area to work on while the rest of the painting is drying. All right, so the colors I see within the cloud are quite orangey. I'm going to take my alizarin crimson, which is a beautiful rich pink, and mix in a little bit of yellow. We'll start with that bright pink color, and I'm going to paint that on the dark shadow sides of the clouds. using the tip of my brush and being a little bit more cautious so that I don't touch the blue of the sky or overlap it too much. We want to try to stay within our lines. I'm going to grab a little more yellow now so it's slightly more orangey. And I'm going to remove a little bit to lighten it on my brush. So just swiping on the paper towel. And you can see the value is now lighter I don't want to lighten it by dipping in the water because that would introduce more water in my brush than is necessary, which would push aside the damp paint on the paper and cause unwanted effects. One of the keys to understanding watercolor and being able to control it is simply just controlling how much water is in your brush. This just takes practice, dipping in the water a little bit to loosen up the paint on my brush but you can see that little bit of extra water does encourage quite a bit more of the paint to flow across the paper. And this is still a little bit damp, so I'm going to be kind of careful as I overlap the blue. But I'm just painting this pinkish peach color. Make sure you leave some of the brightest areas untouched. That's going to make it look like it's glowing if you leave the bright surface of that yellow wash showing through underneath. So I'm just using a blotting motion, a swirling motion to paint that on. I'm rinsing that out and then I'm just going to kind of soften this edge by swiping along it with my damp brush just encouraging it to soften out. Now we can tackle the little top part of the cloud here. Wetting the paper first, just so we get softness within our washes. And I'm going to be a bit more conservative with my paint application in this area. Once again, because I want to preserve the look of this luminous cloud just rising up. So I'm only dropping in my pink on the far left side of the cloud's head. And mostly leaving that untouched. I want it to look so bright and beautiful. Taking a little more yellow, mixing it in with my alizarin crimson, and darkening up this cloud right here.
Now, if you want to get a beautiful, rich purple, the best way to do that is to combine a red and a blue that are close to each other on the color wheel. So ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson are kind of lean towards each other. This one leans more reddish, and this one leans more bluish. So the two of them combined makes a beautiful royal purple. And we will use that quite a bit in this cloud as we move towards the shadow side. So I'm just beginning to darken these edges where this one cloud overlaps the lighter portion of the cloud. And since this is dry enough, we can now begin to add more of a dark shadow. And I want to take advantage of that timing while this area is still damp. All right, so now grab some purple, mix up some more if you need to, alizarin crimson and ultramarine blue. And actually, I'm going to mix in a little bit of burnt sienna to create a brown. When I combine the burnt sienna, ultramarine, and alizarin crimson, it makes it almost a dark, dark, nearly black tone. You just have to make sure you have enough pigment to produce that. Actually, really am happy with this super dark purple. So let's go in with that and paint the far left corner of this cloud, which is the darkest and the most in shadow. And boy, adding this really dark value is making this cloud look even more luminous in the areas of light. It's really quite powerful. So you can just use a scrubbing, swirling motion just to get that paint down. Be careful it's, if it's beginning to dry out a little bit that you don't accidentally scrub the paper too hard or you may end up lifting some layers. Now as I approach this edge where the dark meets the light, I'm going to mix up some more alizarin crimson and this time a little bit of my burnt sienna and a little of the yellow. I'm going to paint that right up next to that purple I just put down for this reddish luminous appearance inside of the cloud. Removing some of that so that it's lighter in value and then grabbing some more yellow. Bringing that right up next to that red. Darkening the top side of this cloud. Oh, that's looking so fun. Now, my cloud has dried quite a bit, so hard edges are going to begin to form. I need to be careful to resolve those quickly. So I'm taking a little bit of this light purple from my palette and pulling that red along into the lighter areas. Resolving edges is just a matter of continually removing paint and water from your brush and swiping along each edge that you put down, progressively getting lighter and lighter. So you remove some with the water so you have a damp, clean brush, and then you swipe along the edge that you put down or scrub along it, and that will soften it out. Look at those cotton candy clouds. So this edge is still quite hard. I'm going to resolve that with a little bit of purple and kind of flattening out my brush just to encourage the paint to blend. Taking a little bit more blue in the mixture now and darkening up this one cloud shape right here at the bottom. The soft bristles of this brush are also so helpful for encouraging a softer look in the painting. A little more purple now. Mix up more as needed. Here at the very bottom we're just darkening, removing some more paint and softening the edges. Clouds are so much fun to paint because there's really no pressure. They can be painted however you want with a variety of brush strokes and you can almost move your brush any which way and it will still look like clouds which is one of the joys of painting them. Little added purple cloud right there. Remove some paint and soften. You can make these clouds as complex or as simple as you wish. It's really up to you, the artist. I'm going to take a bit more pink here at the top. 
feel like it needs to be more balanced out with the rest of the cloud. More of a rich red here in the dividing line. And the more you do this, the easier it will get, especially the whole water brush control. <laughs> that aspect, I think, is one of the trickiest. But it, it really just takes a little bit of time and practice, and anyone can master that. One more layer of blue over the top here. And a little bit more of that blue at the bottom. When I paint that over the top of this pinkish tone, of course, it looks a little bit purple, which is what I'm going for here. And so anywhere I see it needs to be just delicately shaded darker. I'm beginning to add those fine finishing details. Shift whichever color you're using based on what you see in the reference photo. I have more red here now in this pinkish cloud. And dipping in the water to remove some so that it's lighter in value as I approach the light side of the cloud. Removing a little bit more. And then I see quite a bit of orange in this one spot and I want to balance that out elsewhere in the painting. So I'm going to just introduce a little bit of that right here at the top. More yellow in the tones in the mixture. And even a little bit more right here on this top cloud where the pink moves to the yellow into the white. And I think that looks a little more balanced. Now I want to soften along this edge a little bit so that it appears just a bit fluffier. So I'm just swiping along this shadow edge of the cloud. All right, so sit back. If there's anything that you feel like you maybe missed, now is your chance to make small corrections. I do think I want to add one more dark shadow here and here. So to do that, I'm going to mix up a little bit more of this almost black mixture using ultramarine and burnt sienna especially. And then the alizarin crimson is helping it appear more like a blackish purple, which is such a great color for inside of clouds. All right, double check to make sure that it's not damp or in that danger zone where it's beginning to dry. Then you can add another shadow tone wherever you want to go darker. Now I'm going to rinse most of that out. And then once again, just soften along the edges of the layer that I just put down. And that looks a little bit better, I think. Quite a bit darker, which is what we were going for. Cloud drama, right? We gotta go dark. There's another dark shape I see right here. I want to go a little darker with that too. Might as well while I have it on my brush, right? Rinsing that and softening the shape. All right, so let's see how we did. We'll go ahead and remove our tape. I think that looks very dramatic. <laughs> so there is our finished cotton candy cloud against a blue sky. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more cloud tutorials like this one. Thanks for watching.